Hello beautiful people, I hope you're doing well today. My name is Kathleen, if you're new here, welcome to the Conscious and Chic YouTube channel where I believe that it's possible to live your best life all the while making the world a better place. Today's video is all about ethical fashion. What is it? Why do we need to talk about it? Why do we need to add ethical in front of fashion? Isn't all fashion ethical? Well, we're gonna talk about this. But before I dive in, you've made it this far, you might as well subscribe. And turn on your notification bell so you don't miss any of my updates. If you're interested in ethical fashion, beauty, food, travel, tech, sustainability, all of that good stuff, you're in the right place. So subscribe and join the family. Now, let's get into it. When you see somebody use the term ethical fashion, whether it's in an Instagram bio, in an about page, when a brand says that their products, whether it's shoes, bags, accessories, clothing, were made ethically, what they mean is that no people were harmed in the making of those products. They were treated with dignity, they had a safe work environment, they were also paid a living wage for their work. And they were not coerced to do that job. They were not kidnapped, enslaved. Labor trafficking is a big issue in the world that we live in. And so when people produce things ethically, it means that they're really treating the people that work for them well. Now, you would think that any workplace would offer that, but that's just not the case. I don't know if you remember in 2013, there's this building that collapsed in Bangladesh, this big commercial building called Rana Plaza that killed over 1,100 people and injured over 2,500. And this building had structural issues that they knew about, yet they asked their workers, or forced their workers, I should say, ordered them to come into work the next day and basically told them that if you don't come into work, you don't have a job anymore. And there were other businesses in the same building. There was a bank, there were a few shops that closed because of the structural issues, but the garment factory specifically, which is eight stories of people, innocent people, just trying to earn a living, were forced to come into work. And they didn't know this, but as they walked into the building, some were walking into their deaths. And this started a global conversation that really should have started from way before, but it did put on people's radar that something is wrong in the fashion industry. Maybe we should look into this, find out what we can do to help, and also as consumers, find out how we're contributing to this. And I understand that when people go out to buy things, they think about two things. Do I like it and can I afford it? Do I like it also includes, does it make me look good? Does it make my legs look longer, my waist look smaller? Do I like the colors, the make, the fabric, the embellishments? Do I like it? And then there's also, can I afford it? And can I afford it is, is a very wide range of reasons why people think they can afford certain things, even selling your left kidney. But rarely do people ask, but who made this beyond the designer or the brand? Were they treated well? Are they happy in their jobs? Are they even there out of their own will, their own volition? Are they there because they want to be there or because they were forced to be there? That's where the ethical fashion conversation comes into play, is asking who made my clothes, who made my bag, who made my shoes, and it's a really big conversation that I don't want this to turn into a documentary or a feature film or a memoirs of my relationship with ethical fashion, but I definitely want us to start talking about this. So in the comments, let me know what you know about ethical fashion, if you've ever even thought about whether the pieces that you buy are ethical or not, and let's keep this conversation going as I dive into the five ways that you can make your closet more ethical. Tip number one is stop. Just, just, just stop. Slow down your shopping and look at what you already have. The first tip is to really take inventory of what you already possess. I know this won't necessarily be a popular opinion, but it's really important in the world that we live in that is so consumer driven. There is so much waste. We waste so much of our resources and we waste a lot of clothing as well. A lot of clothing is produced and is never purchased or is produced, purchased, and then just tossed after a few months. So my first tip for you is to stop. Take inventory of what you already have. Look at your closet. See if there are any gaps that you need to fill. Not so much for want, but more for need. Gaps that you need to fill either because of your lifestyle, a new job, it happens, or you have a wedding, something that you need to attend and you need to fill a gap with a new dress is perfectly fine but buying things either as retail therapy to make yourself feel better instead of dealing with your real issues is not the way to go so first tip stop look at what you already have make inventory of your closet and use it wisely tip number two is to invest in a bomb classic timeless 
pieces. It's important when you're building your closet to have your staple pieces that you're able to embellish with accessories, that you're also able to mix in with more trendy pieces, but making sure that those pieces that are more timeless are really, really good quality. Your white tees, your skinny jeans, your pumps, your button down shirts, they should all be of really, really good quality, really good make, so you don't have to constantly buy new ones, constantly have pieces that are just falling apart and then you have to replace them. With that, I will also say that learning how to style staple pieces and learning how to care for them is so important. Reading those care instructions, being able to mend a little hole here, a little hole there. I don't mean re-sewing a whole garment, but being able to fix little problems that would lead you to normally toss a piece, but now you're able to mend it so you're able to wear it longer is so important. And so this tip, you cannot go around it. Invest in quality, ethical pieces. Tip number three is to develop your own signature style. I love trends, but we need to talk about trends, baby. Trends are not the authority on what you should wear. You should wear what fits your lifestyle and your body type. You should not have somebody else dictating how you dress yourself, when you feel confident and when you feel good in your clothes and you should do that you should have confidence and be able to express yourself with what you wear fashion is supposed to be fun fashion is not supposed to be so serious well besides when we're talking about it being ethically made that needs to be serious but other than that fashion should be fun it should be an expression of who you are and so taking tips is great looking at influencers and lifestyle bloggers and fashion bloggers to get inspiration on how to style things is awesome. Looking at magazines is great as well, but I want to draw a line between simply buying and consuming what you're told to buy versus really taking ownership of your closet and your fashion and your sense of style and creating something that's uniquely you and that's genuinely and authentically you. One way to be more ethical in fashion is definitely to develop your own signature style so you don't feel the need every season to buy something new so you can fit a certain mold what you've been told that you should wear. I'm so passionate about this. I'm so against people being so cookie cutter and being an exact replica of something that's in a magazine. Be you, love you, stay true, boo. Do your own thing. You don't have to follow all the trends. You, you just don't. Tip number four is speak up. Find out what the brands that you already love, that you're already supporting, that you're already wearing are doing behind closed doors. This is not telling you to go on this witch hunt or even to alienate yourself from the fashion industry and only looking to brands that make it super clear that they are ethical, but engaging the brands that you already love, that you're already supporting, that you're already wearing. Go through your closet, look at those labels. Which brands are you buying? And reach out to them directly. Let them know that you love their design, that you like the way they're clothes fit you and so on and so forth but also let them know that you are becoming aware that the fashion industry has some issues and that you hope and pray that they're not part of the problem but that they are part of the solution reach out to those brands let them know how you feel about ethical fashion ask them directly who made my clothes I want to know I care about this and if you either don't respond to me or you are not making this a priority, I will stop supporting you. Because when it comes to ethical fashion, it's important to still remember that garment factory worker at the end of that process. It's important to support them, to shed light on their plight, and not only go from shopping with everyone and then uniquely shopping with ethical brands, forgetting about the fact that those garment workers still exist, that individual still exists. They still need a voice. They still need someone to speak up for them. And so go to the brands that you already use, that you already love, and ask them who made my clothes. And don't take a redacted PR answer for an answer either. Get the truth. Get to the bottom of it. Tip number five, numero cinco, is the last one. It is actually the most obvious one, and that's why I kept it for last, is buy from ethical fashion brands. Buying from ethical fashion brands is so vital and important because it lets them know that what they're doing matters. It lets them know that there is a customer base, there is a marketplace for what they're producing. If you don't support them, if they're not making money, they will shut down and close. It's also helping the entire market move in the direction of ethical fashion. It's also helping 
those brands expand and hire more and more people. You have to look at this globally. If there is a factory in the same area that is producing things ethically, that is investing in their workers, helping them get education for their children and providing for their families, their entire community is bound to improve. And not only that, it will make working for that factory more attractive to people who might currently be working for those other factories. By investing in ethical fashion, by supporting those brands, you're helping them make more money, open more jobs so more garment factory workers can work in those safe conditions. So definitely invest in ethical fashion as you speak up to the other brands that might be ethical, they might not be ethical, you just don't know, but you are finding out. So to recap, first, stop, take inventory of what you already have. Two, invest in bomb classic pieces. Three, develop your own signature style. You don't have to rely on trends. Four, Speak up, let the brands that you already use, that you already love, know that you care about who made your clothes. And five, shop ethically. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also comment below, let me know which tip resonated with you the most, which one you're going to apply, if you're gonna apply all five of them. And if you have other tips that you would like to add, put it in the comments. Let's keep this conversation going. Also connect with me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. And I also feature ethical brands there. So if you need inspiration of where to shop, you'll want to check out my Instagram. So join me over there. But before you go, just watch the next video. You're already here. You made it this far. So go ahead, watch the next video. And I'm just going to let you get on with it. Thank you for watching. And remember to stay conscious and chic.